Hello YouTube viewers, hope you're all doing good. Welcome to this video. I'm Venkat and this is Just Me, an open source channel. Right, uh, in my previous video, I showed you how to create your simple, highly available web application. So that's infrastructure as a service uh, where you're responsible for provisioning all the infrastructure needed. So we basically used a couple of web servers in an auto-scaling group uh, that spans across uh, availability zones. So we made use of two availability zones. And on top of that, we installed an elastic load balancer. Uh, we created target groups for auto scaling group. We created launch configurations. We created an EC2 instance. We configured it as a web server. We then created an image out of that uh, EC2 instance and then used that in the launch configuration. Auto scaling group, we configured the scaling policies actually I showed you how to um, configure the scaling policies and all those things so that's a lot of work so today in this video I'm going to talk about Elastic Beanstalk an interesting AWS service uh, which is actually uh, classified as platform as a service so in the previous video the uh, traditional uh, approach so you provision your infrastructure you do everything uh, you need from the infrastructure and then you deploy the code you write the code you configure the web server you do everything by yourself so whereas in Elastic Beanstalk you're only concentrating on the code that you want to deploy and everything else is managed infrastructure the underlying infrastructure is completely managed by AWS uh, that doesn't mean that you don't have control to the underlying infrastructure it just abstracts uh, the underlying infrastructure but you still have the control of configuring uh, what infrastructure you want for example what type of instances you want to launch whether you want a load balancer you have complete control but it makes your life a lot easier to deploy your code so I'm going to uh, show you a quick demo um, when I say quick it's not going to be a quick uh, because uh, provisioning EC2 instances takes some time. Okay, the same thing we did in the last video where we did everything by ourselves. I'm going to show you how easily we can do that by making use of Elastic Beanstalk. So you have to write your code. The developers can concentrate just on the code and don't have to worry about provisioning the server, what memory they want, what uh, what CPU they want, what type of instance they want, how to configure load balancing, how to configure high availability, everything is abstracted. So they can purely concentrate on their code and getting their code uh, into production as quick as possible. Okay, so that's Elastic Beanstalk, which is platform as a service. It provides a platform to run your application Okay, let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just I'm going to create an application code. It's a web code. So I'm going to create an index.html file and show you how to create a highly available web application that we did in the previous video, but without having to worry about any of the underlying infrastructure. Okay, so let me go into my play directory, which is where I do lots of stuff. And I'm going to create an index.html uh, file and all I'm going to do is just this one. I'm going to have a little text saying just me an open source and pipe that to index.html. Cat index.html, it's that simple, that's it. And if you want to deploy your code in Beanstalk, it has to be uh, zipped or it has to be in the WAR format, web archive for Java applications, WAR, WAR file. So let's create a zip file. I've installed the zip application. So zip index.zip, the file name. So we want to create index.zip and we want to add index.html to that zip archive. That's created. If you look, we have the index.zip file. So that's all needed. So we have written the code. That's it. I'm going to show you how simple it's uh, it's going to be when you're using Elastic Beanstalk. Okay, let's close that. I'm going to search for Elastic Beanstalk. Elastic Beanstalk. So if you haven't created any applications before, your environment will be a little different. So it will ask you, uh, it will show you the getting started uh, page. You can click get started and then go because I've done uh, other um, applications other created other environments uh, my landing page is going to be a little different right okay so 
the first step is to create an environment and then configure it so create a environment so going to elastic beanstalk so hello world so that's the one that I created earlier so now it says no environment currently exists for this application so uh, getting started using elastic beanstalk if we go there you can see the official documentation so let's not worry about that one elastic beanstalk so now we are going to create one whether what what environment you're going to use whether it's a web server environment or worker environment I'll come to worker environment in one of my uh, other videos one of my future videos if you are as it says if you've got some long-running processes you can um, make use of the worker environment so basically web server environment is for the web instances that serve some web pages that's it and if that uh, web page is doing some big long-running tasks you can make use of worker environment uh, which is separate set of auto scaling instances uh, that you can uh, schedule the task on so let's go with the web server environment click select okay environment name so it's all pre-filled for me because I've used that before application name okay let me go back and start from scratch I don't want uh, this create environment delete application let me delete hello world which I created earlier okay that's getting okay that's what I wanted so when you haven't got any application when you're starting for the first time this is what you see welcome to AWS elastic beanstalk get started okay so the application name I'm going to say hello world so that will be my application name application tag if you want to assign any tag whether it's a production environment let's say environment is testing base configuration choose a platform so elastic beanstalk supports these different set of platforms docker multi-container docker java php ruby python tomcat and so on so as i'm trying to deploy a html file a simple web application i can choose php that's compatible with html so i've chosen that application code you want if you want you can go with a sample application aws provides a lot of sample applications that you want that you can try but I'm going to upload my own code but before that if I go to uh, Amazon S3 search for S3 and open a new tab so that's my S3 currently I don't have any buckets and when you create your application it's going to create a bucket where it will store the code okay so upload your code upload I'm going to choose the file home play it's here and the index.zip file okay and version label so I'm going to say the label is version 1.0 and then click upload okay so that's uploaded so now if I go to s3 and if I refresh there you go so that's my uh, elastic beanstalk bucket bucket created for elastic beanstalk and if I click on that so that's my sample code okay so let me okay let me have this one because I want to show something at the end of this video and then you're gonna create application so that's all needed that's it so I've written a simple web application you can go ahead and create the application that's going to create or launch all the instances all um, everything that's required but I'm going to show you how you can configure uh, your environment so basically you're creating something called an environment and let's go and check what other options by the way I'm going to come back here and then create the application without configuring anything so that's that easy it is but if you want you can configure any specific options so create more options sorry configure more options so here's where you can configure so by default it uses low cost free tier eligible which means you won't get load balancing and it will be a single instance capacity environment type is single instance so it's just going to create one instance of EC2 and then because there is only one instance it's not going to create a load balancer and that's the instance and if you want to modify the instance click on that 
you can select instance type any particular instance if you are interested in AMI ID if you want a specific AMI you can specify that and the size of the root volume security groups and everything that's it and capacity if you want you can configure capacity at the moment it's single instance you can see everything is grayed out but that's a single point of failure if you want you can change that to load balanced and you can say how many instances you want and where which availability zones you want uh, to place it and so on so let me change that to the default single instance and let's check what other configurations we have got so once you enable the capacity from single instance to load balanced this option will be enabled and you can configure some load balancer settings rolling updates and deployments I will cover that in a future video so once you have upload your document upload your code and your application is live and if you want to update your code you want to update uh, you want to roll out the next version how you're going to roll out and all those strategies rolling out strategies for those of you who have followed my uh, kubernetes series uh, i talked about uh, the uh, rolling update policies and so on so how you generally deploy your application how you update your application what policies or what strategies you use to um, update your application that kind of thing which I will cover in one of my future videos. So monitoring what you want to monitor, notifications for any type of events that's happening. If you want to be notified, you can add your email address. And the network, this environment is not part of a VPC, but that can be configured. And database, if your application, if your web application uses database and you can configure database, uh, let's check that out. Database and uh, you can use multiple multi available multiple sorry multi availability zone thing okay so you can select the engine mysql postgres or whatever you want instance class availability zone low one zone or high multi availability zone so if you want database as part of uh, this environment you can create that okay so let's go back to previous so what we did was we created an index.html, we zipped that, and then we came to Elastic Beanstalk, and the only two step we did was the application name, we gave it a name, we selected the runtime, which is PHP, and then we uploaded our code. That's it. So I'm going to click Create Application now. So it's going to create all the required things, and once this is complete, I will show you what all resources it has deployed. So we can it's always good to uh, keep that handy so once it's complete um, I'm gonna pause the video now because it's gonna take like four or five minutes and then I'll show you what resources it has deployed all right it has completed uh, deploying the application now you can see the green tick icon which means the application is healthy and the running version is hello world version 1.0 and we are using the PHP runtime and that's the configuration and these are the list of events and you will get a URL endpoint so let's quickly go and test that just be an open source cool so that's it uh, that's how easy it is to deploy your code in Elastic Beanstalk whereas in the previous video we did all the hard work of uh, provisioning setting up configuring all our base underlying infrastructure and this time we created a simple HTML file zipped it uploaded it to s3 created the application and we waited for like two or three minutes that's it and then elastic beanstalk has done all the heavy lifting for us okay let me close that and now we will look at some of the uh, configurations and some of the uh, items okay so that's dashboard and configuration so here you can see uh, if you want you can change the configuration that will be applied and if you want you can change the view from table view to grid view or if you're interested you can go with table view I'm quite uh, liking this grid view okay so logs um, this is the logs from the EC2 instances that's launched as part of this uh, uh, Beanstalk application so click request logs to retrieve the last hundred lines or the entire set of logs. So you can request logs. Let, let's do that. Request logs, last hundred lines. Okay, so it's going to retrieve the logs, I think from CloudWatch, and that's there. And if you click that one, so that's the 
httpd error log access log and the application log itself the elastic beanstalk application log okay and then health so you can see here it's just one instance and the instance state is okay it's up for like four minutes and then you can see the individual uh, CPU usage one minute five minutes uh, load average and then the user person system idle IO wait or anything uh, and then you can also see the request the number of requests per second coming into our application uh, and the request based on the response code 200 300 400 page not found or authorization or anything 500 server internal error and then some latency related information load average and CPU utilization so that's overall and you also get the details on an individual instance basis so that's health and let's look at monitoring so that's monitoring you can see some little graph based on CPU utilization and all those things alarms we don't have any alarms configured events so this is where you see all the events and things okay so now let's go ahead and look at uh, what resources it has deployed for us okay let's go to EC2 so this is a low cost not a high available multi availability zone deployment it's just a single basic beanstalk deployment which has been deployed to one availability zone let's look at instances and if you can see hello world n and the instance which is t2 micro and it has deployed it in the availability zone eu west 2c state is running we've got the public ip address and the elastic ip it has also created an elastic ip because if this instance dies it will create another instance and then attach this elastic ip uh, to that instance okay so we have this um, instance created that's expected and let's look at the security group it has created so that's the security group let's look at the inbound rules so port 80 allowed from the internet 0.0.0.0, .0 from anywhere okay so if we look at the security group so that's the security group that it has created inbound rule that's HTTP from anywhere load balancers it hasn't created any load balancer and no target groups because we are just using a single instance let's see if it has created any auto scaling group auto scaling group and it has created one auto scaling group with desired number of instances to be one because we just chose one instance that's okay activity history and it has launched one instance scaling policies no scaling policy instances and all those details uh, do we have any launch configuration? Yes, we do. We definitely need to have a launch configuration because that's the first step in creating an auto scaling group. Okay, this air capacity is one. Even with a single instance, it creates uh, with an auto scaling group because if that instance dies, this auto scaling group is responsible for creating another instance. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is let's go back to all applications. This is how it looks it's green and looking healthy and let's get into the environment okay and look at the configuration let's change uh, some of the configuration of this uh, elastic beanstalk application let's say we want to make it highly available by deploying it to multiple availability zones so for that I'm going to modify the capacity I'm going to change the instance type from single instance to load balanced and then instance I want to say start with two instance I want uh, two instance to start with uh, on two availability zones and maximum I can have up to four instances or whatever you want maybe you can turn that to six availability zones any means uh, it can be deployed to any availability zone but bear in mind the two instances and all the auto scale instances will be created in one single availability zone but if you select any two or any three if you choose any two it will be deployed across two availability zones so I'm gonna select uh, say 2b and 2c scaling cool down is 360 seconds which is six minutes by default so when it scales out scales up I'm sorry when it scales up to from two instance to three instance for example based on uh, the usage and the next scaling up will happen only after six minutes so that's scaling cooldown and then metric 
scaling trigger on what basis we need to scale our instances whether it can be a CPU utilization disk latency network based the default is network out you can change that to CPU utilization at the moment is network out average number of bytes for a period of five minutes and uh, I don't know six followed by six zeros or seven zero bytes I don't know how much it is but based on that scale up increment by one and lower the threshold scale down the instances by minus one and all those details and it's also possible to do time-based scaling for example if you want to say uh, during office hours during peak hours from nine to five uh, I need to scale by two instances and during the night hours when the traffic comes down I can uh, scale down by two instances and so on that's time-based scaling and this one is scale trigger okay so we've selected load balanced and if you click continue and now you can see that it has also got configuration details for load balancer let's have a look at it so load balancer and you can see that it creates a classic load balancer okay so there are some configurations that you can do health check path connection draining enabled load balancing across multiple availability zones enabled so let's check that we need that definitely because otherwise uh, all the instances will be in a active passive thing so depending on where the load balancer gets created it will direct traffic only to the web instances on that availability zone uh, the instances on the other availability zone will be like a, a standby kind of thing so we need to have the load balancing across multiple availability zones we are trying to design a highly available web application which I showed in my previous video but using Elastic Beanstalk okay continue and then now we can hit apply configuration okay it's going to give you a warning saying the environment type is being changed from single instance to load balanced yes confirm okay so now you can see if I go to all applications um, it's green so in a short while it will turn to gray usually when you create your application for the first time environment for the first time or you're updating your environment uh, the um, application will change to gray meaning it's either being updated or being created okay let's click that let's wait for it to finish I'm going to pause the video and come back when it's ready it has created the load balancer and it's going to create another instance because we said we want uh, two instances to start with so it has created another security group this time it has created a security group for uh, load balancer once this completes I will show you uh, the two security groups and how the traffic is routed and all those things all right the environment seems healthy now let's look at the health okay so 15 minutes two minutes uh, so now we have two instances and you can look at the individual instances um, let me adjust my video uh, the individual instances uh, load average and all those details let's look at monitoring okay uh, we've got some nice graphs health and all applications looking good and let's look at the URL cool we have hello world application that's running good and if I go to my console and look at the easy to instances let me show you the instances okay so now you can see since we created these two availability zones um, so it has created the second instance so now we have two instances one in each region highly available and uh, we have also got the auto scaling group now uh, even before we had the auto scaling group so now auto scaling group and you will see the configuration here activity history it has launched the new instances scaling policy now you will see the scaling policy simple scaling based on the network when network out is less than this many for 300 seconds remove one instance and network out if it's greater than these many for five minutes then add one more instance so we've got our auto scaling group we've got high availability and we've got the elastic load balancer and if you look at elastic IPs uh, it has deleted the elastic IP we don't need an elastic IP for an elastic load balancer right 
and uh, let's go to the load balancer okay so it has created a load balancer let's look at the target groups and you won't find any target group something wrong with my video okay so you won't find any target group because the target group applies only to application load balancer if you remember uh, when we created the when we configured the load balancer in this beanstalk video uh, the default option is the classic load balancer you can see that here type is classic so classic doesn't come with target groups whereas you can see the instances that it's serving so this load balancer is doing is serving uh, the backend instances which are these two okay let's go to the security groups now so now we can see two security groups let's look at one of them look at the inbound so http port 80 it's allowed from everywhere probably this is uh, the security group attached to our load balancer let's look at the other security group http port 80 and the traffic is allowed only from this security group which is the one we saw earlier this one so this one is for the load balancer exposed to public this one is for the web server which is exposed only to the load balancer it's not exposed the web servers are all not exposed to the public so the only traffic coming to the web servers are from the elastic load balancer okay cool that's all uh, to it and if you want you can try and configure uh, various different things and you can try that basically these are all uh, comes under free tier so once we are done with it we need to terminate the environment as usual we can clear up tidy up all the resources we have deployed just to save uh, the free tier limits and don't want to uh, see accidental surprising bills so let's go ahead and do that all applications and click action uh, terminate delete create environment no click on the environment and then select terminate environment and it's asking for the name for confirmation it's hello world dash n and then click terminate and it is terminating the environment it's going to take a couple of minutes to delete the instances delete the load balancer delete security groups so once it's done let's go ahead and verify that it has indeed deleted all the instances all the resources that it has deployed all right the environment is completely deleted now it's terminated and if you want you can restore the terminated environment and this is going to stay here for another another hour or two maybe and then it will get disappear it will disappear <coughs> okay so now let's go ahead and check whether it has cleaned up all the resources I'm going to click refresh so now both of these instances have been terminated let's look at the security groups uh, that's the default security group so it has deleted the elastic load balancer and the um, web instance security group that it has created uh, no elastic IPs and let's look at the load balancer so it has deleted the load balancers that's good auto scaling group we are back to the start page uh, which means it has deleted the auto scaling group and finally let's try the uh, uh, s3 bucket okay so still it has the bucket s3 bucket and it has the application core resources and everything let's go back to s3 so it hasn't it won't automatically delete the S3 bucket. We have to manually delete it. Let's try deleting it. Click. We don't want to see that one. And click delete. So for the confirmation, we have to enter the bucket name that we are going to delete. Control C, Control V, confirm. And there is one error. So it won't let you delete the elastic beanstalk. I'll show you why. So if you look at the error, operation failed, delete bucket failed. If you look at the details, it says access denied. Why? So whenever you deploy an application using Elastic Beanstalk, it's going to create a bucket where it stores the application data. And to prevent accidental deletion of the bucket, it has set a bucket policy. So if you go into the bucket, let's get into the bucket and look at permissions and then bucket policy. So there is this bucket policy and if you look at the last option here resource is elastic beanstalk so that's the bucket name action is delete bucket and the effect is deny so deleting the bucket is denied by default that is to prevent accidental deletion of the bucket so we have to delete this policy yep 
So now there is no bucket policy associated with this bucket. So go back to Amazon S3, select that, click delete, and then copy the bucket name for confirmation. Copy, paste it, and click confirm. Okay, so our S3 bucket is gone. Cool. Um, that's all I wanted to show you in this video. And uh, uh, my next few videos will be around Beanstalk. And the next video will be about how to install EBCLI, which is a command line tool to manage your Elastic Beanstalk environment. That's going to be very exciting. So whatever we did in this video, we are going to do it completely from the command line in my next video. And then I will show you a few other Beanstalk options like rolling updates and we'll play with some other features in the Beanstalk in the next few videos. And then I'll switch my focus to Lambda and other AWS services. All right, so I don't want to drag this video because it's so, so extremely hot here in the UK and I'm sweating, you can see. Okay, so if you like this video, please share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I've got lots and lots of interesting uh, topics to cover and if you've got any topics, you can suggest me in the comments. Um, if I'm doing anything wrong, please feel free to uh, correct me. Uh, I've got quite a bit of experience with AWS, but I might be doing something uh, not the best practice so please correct me if I'm doing something wrong so I'm learning as part of uh, doing all these videos right so for any issues or any questions if you don't understand anything or if you want to know about a particular option in creating Beanstalk leave me a comment I'll get back to you as early as possible alright thanks for your time watching this video today I will see you all in my next video bye bye